Here is my security news roundup for the week ending December 1st, 2023. U.S., U.K., and global partners release secure AI system development guidelines. The U.K. and U.S., along with international partners from 16 other countries, have released the new guidelines for the development of secure artificial intelligence systems. The approach prioritizes ownership of security outcomes for customers, embraces radical transparency and accountability, and establishes organizational structures where secure design is a top priority, the U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency said. The goal is to increase cybersecurity levels of AI and help ensure that the technology is designed, developed, and deployed in a secure manner, the National Cybersecurity Center added. Read more at thehackernews.com. Phone bill privacy rules highlight tech hurdles for domestic violence survivors. The Federal Communications Commission has adopted a new set of rules aimed at providing privacy and financial support to people experiencing domestic violence who share a phone plan with their abuser, spotlighting often overlooked technology barriers for people trying to escape dangerous relationships and living situations. The agency rules unanimously adopted last week, will require phone carriers to separate survivors' lines within two business days of a request, waive fees associated with such requests, and block records of communication with help hotlines on account logs. Read more at emergingtechbrew.com. The FCC wants to change the rules to speed up the rollout of fiber internet. The Federal Communications Commission plans to vote on rules, including cost-sharing, regarding utility pole attachments at its December meeting. The Federal Communication Commission wants to revise its rules about attaching equipment to poles to speed up broadband deployment. Utility and telecom companies are in disagreement about who should shell out the money for pole attachments needed to run fiber, for example. The Commission will consider rules to make the pole attachment process faster, more transparent, and more cost-effective. SCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel said in a note outlining next month's open meeting agenda. Read more at quartcuttersnews.com. Zero Day Alert. Google Chrome under active attack, exploiting new vulnerability. Google has rolled out security updates to fix seven security issues in its Chrome browser, including a zero day that has come under active exploitation in the wild. Tracked as CVE 2023-6345, the high severity vulnerability has been described as an integer overflow bug in Skia, an open-sourced 2D graphics library. As is typically the case, the search giant acknowledged that an exploit for CVE 2023-6345 exists in the wild, but stopped short of sharing additional information surrounding the nature of attacks and the threat actors that may be weaponizing it in real-world attacks. Read more at thehackernews.com. Associated Press, ESPN, CBS among top sites, serving fake virus alerts. Scam Club is a threat actor who's been involved in malvertising activities since 2018. Chances are you probably ran into one of their online scams on your mobile device. Confiant, the firm that has tracked Scam Club for years, released a comprehensive report in September while also disrupting their activities. However, Scam Club has been back for several weeks, and more recently, they were behind some very high-profile malicious redirects. The list of affected publishers includes the Associated Press, ESPN, and CBS, where unsuspecting readers are automatically redirected to a fake security alert connected to a malicious McAfee affiliate. Read more at malwarebytes.com. 
Arden confirms hospitals disrupted over ransomware attack. Several U.S.-based hospitals are struggling with network outages. All affected locations belong to the same healthcare provider, Ardent Health Services. The company confirmed it suffered a disruptive ransomware attack. At least six healthcare institutions owned by AHS have reported network outages over the Thanksgiving weekend. One of the affected hospitals, BSA Health Systems in Amarillo, Texas, had to divert emergency medical services to nearby hospitals. Other affected AHS-owned institutions include St. Francis Campus of the University of Kansas Health Systems, Port North Medical Center in Idaho, Hillcrest Health Care Systems, Loveless Health Systems in New Mexico, Pascac Valley Medical Center, and Mountainside Medical Center in New Jersey. Read more at cybernews.com. Hid Security's user data compromised after app failed to set password. Hid Security, a popular parental control app that's used to track children, has exposed its activity logs, leaving users' private data in the hands of threat actors. With more than a million downloads on Google Play, Hid Security provides parents with services to track their children's location listen to the sounds around the child to ensure safety, and set gaming limits. On September 16th, researchers discovered that the app failed to configure authentication for elastic search and log stash collections. Due to Kid Security's oversight, users' activity logs were left publicly available to anyone on the internet for more than a month according to estimates. Read more at cybernews.com. This week's must-see on my YouTube channel. Non-delivery and non-payment scams top the charts in holiday fraud. It's not just the busiest shopping season. For scammers and fraudsters, it's easily the busiest scamming season, too. Please watch my video on that topic by following the link listed. Did you know? Potato chip bags are filled with nitrogen gas to prevent spoilage and soggy chips. The extra air also helps protect the chips from being damaged by rough handling during the shipping process. Did you know that competitive art used to be in the Olympics from 1912 to 1948? Maybe Dal E can revive it. Find a good. It's all around you. Find it. Showcase it, and you'll start believing in it. Thanks to Jesse Owens. Just thought you might want to know. And that's a wrap for this week's Security News Roundup. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye, and thanks for watching and listening.